Hello again, hockey fans. Are you ready to brave the wild? It is Brave the Wild episode number twenty-nine. Just one more for the big three zero. Hey, we're 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 rolling right along. I am Paladino Joey, also Joey Awajan, if you want my regular name. And uh, here we are, Brave the Wild today, which is available on thesportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank you always for downloading and listening to this wonderful show. Well, the guest of the show today, we're going to review three games, three victories for the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, yep, yep, I did say it, three victories for the Minnesota Wild. How about that for a surprise? Yeah, it's been a wonderful, oh, it's been a wonderful six days for the Wild, and they have moved out of the bottom position in the Western Conference standings. We're going to get into that uh, at the end of the game reviews. We're going to review those three games. Um, of course, as I mentioned, the uh, style of show is a little bit going to be a little different. Less numbers, more talk. So that's more the idea here. Though there's always going to be some numbers because there has to be. Uh, but the guest, the guest of the show in general is the improvement or the main reason why the Minnesota Wild have improved, is the newcomers. Chuck Kobasu with a hat trick. Guillaume Latandres with, you know, already becoming a factor. Andrew Ebert, excuse me, Andrew Ebert has been a factor since he got here. He scored a goal in his very first game, remember, about two weeks ago. Right in from the Blackhawks. Boom, scores. So it's pretty exciting. These newcomers have been fantastic. And, uh, hey, you know, we'll take it. We will take it. There's some strange names, uh, it's almost like the expansion wild in a way. You get these strange players out of nowhere that end up working out. You know, the Jim Dowds, the, the West Walls, the uh, Philip Kubas, blah bitty blah. Dwayne Rollison, yeah, he worked out too out of nowhere, and uh, that's why they became a good team. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just get lucky, and the Wild have uh, gotten lucky so far with these three guys. It's 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 been nice. Maybe 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 this is a going to be a better year than we thought. It sure looks like it right now, anyway. It sure does. Um, we're going to talk about Guillaume Latendresse, now that I'm sort of saying his name correctly. And uh, we are also going to get into a little bit of Nick Letty, who is returning to the Gophers lineup. Nick Letty, remember him, the uh, top draft choice for the Minnesota Wild, freshman with the Golden Gophers, the first major Minnesota Gopher, Minnesota player to be a first-round pick, other than uh, A.J. Thelen in 2004, who was also from Minnesota. He wasn't on the Gophers, and uh, he was a joke. And he was also Doug Risebrow did that draft. So, <laughs> yeah, you get the idea of my little knock on Dougie there. But, uh, yeah, Nick Letty, that should be very... Uh, now we're going to see what he can do with the Gophers. It should be very interesting indeed. So, we are going to get into the game reviews right now. And here we go. It's just funny, though. It's funny. It really is. Now, this is, of course, day after Thanksgiving, and I hope all of you had a happy Thanksgiving. Black Friday. Didn't go shopping. Still haven't done a squat. I haven't done anything. Not even a glint in my eye of shopping so far. Yeah. Enough of that, though. Colorado Avalanche come to Minnesota. Matinee. 1 p.m. I was excited. Turned it on. Watched the whole thing. And uh, wanted to see Guillaume Latendresse go out and play some hockey. And uh, he he looked all right. wasn't really much of a factor early on because he's just getting started. But eh, you know he he did some nice he had some nice intangibles. He's a pretty tough guy as well, a very big guy. But it mentions in an article I'm going to get into later that's not really what he wants to be as a big guy. He wants to be more of a a piece, and he just might be a piece as the 27th Black Friday. What's funny is. On episode number 28, I mean, it's just like clockwork, folks. It's just like clockwork. It almost makes you wonder if they listen to the show. I'm sure they don't, but it's weird. It, it makes me wonder. I mentioned how uh, Chuck Kobasu, yeah, Chuck Kobasu, I was like, yeah, they're kind of excited about him. I don't know why, even though, you know, he's been a 20-goal scorer in his career and stuff, but I don't know why they're all excited about him. He's got three points in 12 games, a lot of freaking duh. So what does he do against the Colorado Avalanche Friday afternoon? He gets a hat trick. Yeah, he got a hat trick. A hat trick. Are you serious? And uh, it was a legitimate good hat trick, too. Colorado, though, came out scoring early. Well, not really early. It was a good... uh, Well, yeah. (laughs) There was a good start to the game. Kyle Quincy was able to get his third goal of the year. But luckily, Owen Nolan answered right away with his seventh goal. The old man, Nolan, answers right away. 
Uh, there was a good energy in that first period. Lots of shots on goal, 11 to 9 in favor of Colorado. But, uh, overall, the energy was there for both teams. And, uh, you know, I, I just had this sneaky feeling the Wild are going to pull this one out. You could just kind of feel it. You know, it, it's a home game and they're, you know, they're wearing their red jerseys, not the green ones this time. The Wild have had some nice success against Colorado, by the way. The first place Colorado Avalanche. At least at the time, they're in first place. <laughs> we'll get into the standings later. Um, but, uh, there's a time that I get confused because there's just so many games going on at once. I can't wa- watch everything all the time. But, uh, you know, you figured, hey, you know, we won a home game against Colorado earlier this year. It was a nice boost for this team, a team that needs a boost, especially after that just lame loss to Boston earlier this week. Just totally got shut down by the Boston Bruins. Uh, and the Wild, yeah, nice energy coming in. Chuck Koba through there it is. And I'm like, oh, that figures. Right after I mentioned him, he scores a goal in the second period which was a really entertaining second period, by the way. And it's like, hey, the Wild have the lead. This is fantastic. This is awesome. But about two minutes later, Paul stands and he's able to net his sixth goal of the year. The uh, Colorado Avalanche going on the power play. Both teams were very effective on the power play in this game. Colorado was one of four. The Wild were two of four in the game. But... uh, it was basically like, oh gosh, this is going to be, you know, while they're really going to have to work for this victory, because Colorado's right, you know, they're right on our backs anytime we, we get anything going. But then a mere minute, a minute and 19 seconds later, Chuck Kovacu, second goal, and then I'm like, because the Wild won on the power play, a dumb penalty for the Colorado Avalanche, and it was like, wow, this is, un- now I'm really, now I'm really going to be eating crow on episode 29. Chuck Kovacu with a two-goal game here. <laughs> Totally, totally awesome to see Chuck Kobusu go out and show what he can do. And the announcers were talking about how this guy is a uh, is is a fairly legit guy. You know, twenty goal scorer. He's had forty point seasons, fifty point seasons in the past. Um, and now we're starting to see a little bit of it. Now, of course, folks, it's one game. It's one game. I know what you're all thinking, and I, I agree with you. It's just one game. But still, even for one night, it's like. This is pretty cool. I mean, yeah, remember Eric Schwenar had a two-goal game for the Wild. Was it his first or second game with the Wild? Jacques Lemaire said, it's yeah, it's one game, guys. And how many goals did Eric Schwenar score after that? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think he scored a single goal again. <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. Eric Schwenar, brother of Mark Schwenar. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that'll be the case with Kobosu. He's a little more proven than that guy, Eric Schwenard, but... Uh, very, very awesome. Now, it's just, here we go. This is one of those newcomers that just kind of happened in here this year. Because it's, it's just that kind of year. You know, you're going through some changes. The team is struggling as well. And, uh, you know, totally different philosophy than uh, what uh, the, the Mayor Risebrow thing had, even though those two guys didn't always agree on everything in the end. Um, but, yeah, you're getting these kind of, you know, these pieces just kind of in out of nowhere off the streets or via trades or whatever and there you go Kobasu this was obvious this was a trade a, a draft pick so uh oh Doug Risebrough syndrome Kobasu though just played some good hockey I remember how the announcers like yeah go try to get that hat trick in the second period this was after Chris Stewart tied the dang game up the game was tied two excuse me three to three at the time and um it's like, yeah, you know, here we go. The Wild, there's still hope here. Lots of energy. I mean, lots of shots on goal for both teams. The Wild showing some energy finally via that after that frustrating Boston game, as mentioned. So in come the Wild and the Blackhawks. And it was lots of stops basically back and forth in that third period. But the Wild get another power play. Andrew Burnett with his ninth goal of the year is just cool watching him. The way he just kind of held the stick up like, yep, just kind of held it up vertically. It looked kind of funny how he held it, like he's some soldier holding a shotgun or something. You know, in the Civil War or something. I don't know. <laughs> it looked kind of funny, and um, but it was a it was a very nice play. It looked kind of he it looked very simplified too. I mean, what a nice pass by Mika Koivu. Zidlik, he kind of getting it over to Koivu in the corner. Brunette centering it over to Bruno, and he just jammed that sucker in there. And it's here we go. The wild, the wild live, the wild live. It's a home game, and I think we're gonna pull this one out. Colorado Avalanche try as they might, could not get it done. Anderson was pulled, the goalie Anderson of the Black Blackhawks, the, uh, the Avalanche was pulled, and 
It's like, oh, where's Chuck Kobasu? Come on, get Chuck Kobasu in there. Oh, there he was. He finally was in there with only a couple seconds to go in the game. Koivu was able to, or Zanin was able to stop the puck, get it up to Koivu, who zinged it up to Kobasu, who just kind of dropped it on in there. Hat trick for Chuck Kobasu. And there you go. There you go. Chuck Kobasu with a first hat trick for the Wild in, in a while. Forgive the weird talk there, wild in a while, but uh, beautiful. It's second, third, and fourth goals of the year. Not sexy numbers, but uh, maybe the production will continue to to rise for Chucky Kobusu because it's been <laughs> it's been newcomer week for the Wild. It really has been a positive, positive deal for the Wild this past week. Absolutely awesome. So then it's a back to back, heading to Denver, Colorado, Mountain Time, Saturday the twenty eighth. Immediately. And it's like, okay, you know, we got one. Um, we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, if the Wild somehow pull off a sweep in this little two-game series, I'm going to be amazed. And ladies and gentlemen, they did. The Wild went at three to two. F- fantastic! Just couldn't believe it. Didn't look like it was going to happen though, because Colorado taking a two nothing lead in that first period had a lot of us a little frustrated, just a little bit. But then in the second period, right out of the gate. Eric Belanger, with only a minute into the second period, gets an unassisted goal due to a turnover by the uh, Blackhawks. Just great. I uh, keep calling him that. Colorado Avalanche. Golly. What is the deal here? Totally wrong team. Totally different team. Um, yeah, great, great job by Belanger. Making it a 2-1 to one game, so there's still hope that things can get going. A little bit of back and forth throughout that second period. But then Latendresse was able to get his first goal. As a member of the Wild, only his third of the year. As remember, he was pretty much buried in Montreal. He was kind of buried over there. He also was a second-round pick, but still, there, there's pressure because, yeah, as I'm going to get into, that was his hometown over there in Montreal, Guillaume Latendresse. And uh, the Wild tie it up. And it, You know, if Wild were just hoping to get out of here with one point, the game does go to overtime. We head to the shootout, and the Wild sweep the shootout. Miko Koivu, and who do you think got the game-winning goal? Andrew Ebbett, another wild newcomer. It's just non-stop. It's, it's non-stop. Kobusu, Latin Grace, Andrew Ebbett. There's a new hero every night for the Wild. And uh, what a fantastic finish. And the Wild able to just slide right out of there. That shootout was about as easy as you're going to get. Svados couldn't get anything. Well, Walski couldn't get anything. And uh, <laughs> Koivu and Ebbett score. I mean, that's just... Bada bing, bada boom. Let's let let's go home. Let's go home. Victory for the Wild. Fantastic effort by the Wild in that one. As then we head to Wednesday's game. This was last night, and it was a pretty pretty entertaining game. Pretty high scoring, you could say, five to four in favor of the Wild. A home game. The Wild's home record has been pretty darn good, and it takes charge yet again. But it was pretty dramatic. That first trade was crazy. Wild get three goals. Nashville gets two. Mietnin, Clutterbuck, and Guillaume Latendres again. Factoring in Martin Havlat, by the way, is back in the Wild's uh, lineup finally. He got an assist in the game. But to date, the guy has been nothing ever special, ultra special so far this year. That's only his ninth point of the year. Four. Martin Havlat, that was his first game back. And by the way, one final thing I should mention, Josh Harding was the goalie against the Colorado Avalanche Saturday night last week. He got his first victory of the year, finally. So that's something you got to feel really good for him. Josh Harding finally getting his first victory of the year. He was only 1-3 and three on the season. Really, really rough start, giving up five goals in his first game and like four in the second in second game. And been a rough start, but only giving up two in that one, and uh, was fantastic in that shootout. You know, he did he did what he had to do. He stopped the two shots he had to, to face. And you remember, he's really been known as the, the better guy on the shootout. Though, Nicholas Baxter has improved greatly in that area. I mean, <laughs> last year was the year he finally stepped up in that spot. You can't afford to screw around in the shootout. you, you got to win those. you got to win those. It's the difference between one and two points. I mean, it's that simple. Two is bigger than one. Duh, right? So, here we go back to the Nashville game last night. What an entertaining, back-and-forth, crazy little game. The Wild win in overtime, 5-4. to four. 
And it's just, there's something about when the Wild play at home. They just seem to have that extra oomph to them. They really do. It's like they're going to somehow find a way to win this game. And, and uh, they've actually won a couple of road games, finally, the Wild, finally. But really, the Wild come out with energy. Nashville comes out with energy. As I mentioned, a 3-2 to two period in favor of the Wild. What a crazy first period. 16 shots on goal by Nashville, 11 by the Wild. Just back and forth craziness. Second period, not the, not nearly the same. Cal Clutterbuck was all over the place, and him he got his fifth goal of the year. Matt Miettinen got his fourth goal of the year. The uh, That checking line really stepped up. Yamlat Andres is also becoming a checker for the Wild. He, get, he got his fourth goal of the year. So the, pretty much all those checkers are the guys getting it done. That's pretty much the deal right there. That's that third, second, and third line, mostly third line there. Those guys really had a, had a nice night for the Wild, especially in that, that uh, first period. The second period, not nearly as much energy, and Nashville is able to tie this thing up. Steve Sullivan getting his sixth goal of the year. Not nearly as much energy, though. I mean, only 11 shots on goal combined for the two teams. Wild only three of those 11 shots, by the way. So not quite the same. At the third period, the energy returns. The energy returns. Unfortunately, Jason Arnott, the veteran Jason Arnott, who is now on Nashville the last two years, he's been a solid player throughout his whole career, still playing some good hockey putting Nashville up, and and that really took the energy out of the building. I mean, there was a lot of energy, and then it just was gone, just like that. And Miku Koivu with some nice, what a nice uh, combination it, it's been the uh, entire season so far. Koivu, Brunette, and Zidlicky getting things together there. Zidlicky with a lead pass to Brunette, Brunette over to Koivu and the, and the goal. Just a wonderful, wonderful combination that has become for the Wild and uh, that tied things up with about seven minutes left. So there you go. The Wilds still have a chance to win now. Now they're probably going to. Nashville had their chance. They're not going to get it done now. Arnott, Ar- Ar- by the way, had a two-goal night and an assist. He was big, big, big for the Nashville Predators. Very big indeed. But when he went to overtime, he just had this feeling the Wilds are going to win this somehow, some way. And wouldn't you just know, it would be the newcomers, again, factoring in. Andrew Ebbett, again, with the goal. This was a game winner. This was his third goal of the year. All of them with the Wild. Guillaume Latendres setting up Andrew Ebbett. This must have been the fourth line. Andrew Ebbett, the fourth center on the Wild. Though I'm sure he's going to get promoted if he keeps this up past uh, Eric Belanger or somebody like that. <laughs> if this continues, it's been a wonderful job. Andrew Babbitt's been really good. It's been a wonderful performance by these guys. La Tendresse, once again, La Tendresse, excuse me, able to get her done for the Wild. And there it is, three wins in a row, and the Wild are merely one game under 500. Yep, Wild are one game under 500. It has been wonderful. It has been stunning, really, to be honest. And uh, here they come. Here come the Minnesota Wild. Here they come, indeed. So that's going to conclude the game reviews. Now we're going to get more into some background stuff, some news, talk more about the newcomers, specifically Guillaume Latendres. And we're also going to get into Nick Letty. And we're going to check on the Houston Arrows to see how some of those prospects or pieces or whatever you want to call them are doing over in Houston. So our first little Arrows checkup in quite a while. I'm going to talk a little bit of, the, you're going to look at the standings a little bit too and see how things are going. <laughs> you know, the Wild are, are pretty close to actually moving up in the standings here. They're just, they're just right on everybody's back, which is nice. A couple more wins in a row and who knows where this team can go. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm not convinced that's going to happen, but we shall see. So I'm going to take a quick tiny little break here and we will be right back right after this. Don't you just love that ice hockey theme? Yep, good old ice hockey for the NES. I have, I had to throw that in, guys. I had to. Why not? Why the heck not? So that's the guest there. This, we're back here on Brave the Wild. 
episode number 29, a reminder for iPod, MP3 player, Microsoft Zoom users. So let's, uh, before we get into Guillaume Latendres, we're going to get in, we're going to look at the standings a little bit. Now, Minnesota Wild, well, they got, they got past Anaheim. They're one point ahead of them with 25 points, Anaheim with 24. Edmonton only has 26, St. Louis has 27, so there you go, Detroit even with 30, how about, how about that, the Detroit Red Wings are only 30 points, Wild are only 5 points behind the Detroit Red Wings, mm-hmm. so you never know, that 8-3 and three home record looking pretty dang good right now for the Minnesota Wild, everybody in our division has a great home record unfortunately, except Calgary, their road record is better than their home record, 7-5 and five for Calgary, at home, two, excuse me, ten, two, and three on the road. Ten, two, and three on the road, the Calgary Flames. That is really, really, really good. And that's why they're winning the division right now. Only one game over Colorado. Those two losses to the Wild did not help the, the Colorado Avalanche. As now the Calgary Flames have leapfrogged them. Vancouver, luckily, has not been doing as great of late. They're still doing all right. And uh, that's pretty much it matters there. Edmonton is not having a very good season thus far, though their record is almost exactly the same as the Wild. Almost almost identical. The only difference is they have one more loss than the, than the Wild. They have the same amount of wins, but they have an extra OTL, so that's an extra point for them. Oh, goody. 8-5 and five at home, 3-8 and eight on the road. And, uh, yeah, almost identical to the Wild. Almost. Crazy stuff. So who knows what's going to happen? Uh, it's the battle of the bad in the Western Conference, Minnesota and Anaheim tonight. So let's hope the Wild can continue their uh, solid play of late, and I think they will win tonight. I think the Wild are going to win tonight. So if that's going on the limb, well, maybe it is. But it is a home game, and uh, I do think the Wild do pull that one out tonight at seven. It's going to be a it's going to be a nice clash because then unfortunately we go to Nashville tomorrow, another back to back, another weekend back to back. Mm, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough to continue playing as well when you when you have another just another back to back. But we did beat Nashville Wednesday, so who knows? We will see what happens there. Very interesting indeed. If the Wild continue to play like continue to win games like that, then then who knows? Maybe they maybe they'll sneak back into that playoff picture just a little bit. So now we're going to get into Guillaume Latendres. Guillaume Latendres. And, uh, it, you know, a very intriguing addition. You know, we got rid of that fourth overall pick from 2005. Uh, <laughs> Benoit Puglia, who was just, a, you know, pretty much a joke for the Wild. Pretty much a joke. Struggled very much. And uh, Guillaume Latendres, not up to a good start to his career either. He, he's a year younger than Benoit Puglia. Both of them are natives of Quebec, and uh, both of them live right by Montreal, so very interesting. One's going home, and one is getting away from home, as La Tendresse did not really, you know, the, the, the pressure really kicked in, as uh, his quote here in the, uh, pi- in the uh, this was in the Star Tribune, Pioneer Press is the Nick Letty, uh, this one courtesy of Rachel Blunt, so I'll mention that. The biggest problem in Montreal was that I was born there. Everyone expects more when you were born there, and uh, it's really hard for a Quebec-born player to play there because they're looking for a French star, a French star, and sometimes that's not quite your role. You can bring something, but they always want more. A franchise like this, with great fans who, fans who are just here to see hockey and love hockey, that's great for me. So that's what works with the Wild. It's kind of like Montreal in terms of... Uh, well, it's not really, but kind of in terms of, you know, the hockey tradition in Minnesota is pretty strong, and the fan base is really, really strong. So that's the good part, but the pressure's gone, and funny how La Tendresse is doing much better already. He's doing much better. It's like a weight was taken off his back, and he basically says that right there. Uh, I, you know, you can kind of compare him to Mark Parrish. Remember Mark Parrish, obviously, with that very successful high school career with the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars, who are like the, you know, the 70s Montreal Canadiens of high school hockey. I mean, it was ridiculous. They won, I don't know how many state championships in like a very short span. They just won, 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 won. And uh, they stayed good for a while. But yeah, they won like four in a row or something. Just unbelievable run 
for the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars. And, of course, he was one of the big stars of that team, if not the biggest star. Went on to have a successful career with the St. Cloud State Huskies, unfortunately my least favorite college hockey team by far, other than Wisconsin Badgers maybe. Um, has a nice career with the New York Islanders. Comes to the Wild. Wild expect him to continue to do what he did, get about 30, 25, 30 goal type of guy, 50 to 60 points, and he didn't do that. It just wasn't the same. Uh, didn't fit in with Jacques' system either, and it just didn't flat. It just flat didn't work out. And sometimes it doesn't. Darby Hendrickson had a nice run here in the short time he got to play for the Wild, about three years, and now he's a nice uh, sports talent analyst for the Wild and FSN. <laughs> um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but uh, Montreal, the pressure is unbelievable. That's like New York City and being a point guard for the New York Knicks. That's pretty tough. It's a, it's pretty much the same thing, you know. It's the same type of deal. And uh, sometimes it just isn't going to always work out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see how it works out with Guillaume Latendresse. He is, uh, I think he has a chance to be pretty good. Todd Richards appreciates his versatility and effort, which have earned Latendresse an average of 15 minutes, 55 seconds of ice time in his first three games of the Wild. Though he's known for his physical play, Latandres does not want to reestablish himself, or excuse me, does want to reestablish himself as a reliable scorer in Minnesota. I don't want to just be the bagger, banger, the guy who hits everybody. I think I can bring offensive skills too. I can play with the puck and control the game. I've got more. I expect to build good chemistry with my team, with my line mates, and when I get to know the system by heart. I know I can be better. I'm just starting to feel really good. So that's the deal with uh, Latendresse. He, uh, I would think, too, I mean, if you're going to take a guy in the second round, you're going to expect a little more than just a banger. Uh, Kel Clutterbuck was a nice find for the Wild in the third round, and, uh, you know, even he scores a little bit. But uh, Latendresse, you, you, you never know. The guy might end up being a very productive player in the NHL, maybe a 20, 25 goal scorer in time. Uh so far, he hasn't been that in the NHL. Certainly has the size to knock people around. It'd be nice if he can be a legitimate power forward scorer. You know, the nice four check. And uh, the Wild have needed that pretty much since they've started because they've never really had a true four check this Minnesota Wild. They really haven't. And if, uh, if this guy works out and can become that, hey, that's only going to really build for the future here. And, of course, he's still very young at age 23. 23. So we'll see what happens. I I'm going to watch this guy closely. I'm going to watch him very closely. It's been a, it's a, it's an interesting deal. So, he's got to be better than Puglia. Puglia brought no offense, what's, or got no offense, no physicality. All he really did was skate, and that's about it. You know, not, didn't really bring what you need. Didn't really need what you need at all. Um, they also mentioned how Todd Richards' style of play resembles the one used by former Montreal coach Guy Carboneau. And Latendresse flourished under that system, averaging 15 goals and 27 points over three seasons. So um, the production's kind of been there, but 27 points, you know, I I think he can do more. And uh, with less pressure, the same good coaching style that helps a a guy like Latendresse will will only be a positive, I would think. Could be a nice piece for the Wild. We're just going to have to continue to wait and see. By the way, also... Well, Danny Ehrman's stay with the Minnesota Wild was awfully short. Only two games, no goals. He's back with the Houston Arrows. We'll get into that really shortly. That'll be the final topic. We're going to get to Nick Letty, who is finally back. He last played in the Gophers game against Alaska Anchorage, October 30th, and was uh, nailed, broke his jaw. It's been a six-week hiatus. He also had a concussion, so he also will join what is it, folks? Yep, Concussion Junction. Yeah, unfortunately, another member of the Concussion Junction was Nick Letty. But luckily, he's already coming back for the Gophers. Not on the wild, but still, you get the idea. It's just, it's becoming almost like a gag, just how many concussions the uh, wild members of the wild have had this season. It's, it's crazy. So, um... That's the deal there. Nick Letty's quote here in the Piner Press. 
by Brian Murphy. It's hockey. There's bound to be big hits, said Letty, the Eden Prairie native who, of course, the Wild did draft 16th overall last June. You've got to put that out of your head. It's de- it, it definitely stunk because because we were losing, but I actually learned a lot from watching up top in the press box, seeing how plays develop. I think that was a big help. The Gophers were fi- four and five without him and lost another defenseman when Sam Lofquist left the program last month. So that's pretty much the deal. Then also go into how Letty's return stabilizes the blue line that ranks 29th in the nation in scoring. you got to think he's going to help. Uh, just a little bit with the Gophers. Now, not really, this isn't really a Gophers show, but it's mostly keeping track of Nick Letty. So, we'll be monitoring him very closely, especially coming back from that broken jaw. That was not a pretty thing for him. And, uh, of course, you know, when that's your first draft pick last June, you, you hope for the best for him that, you know, things like that don't happen. But that's, a, like he said, it's part of hockey. And we'll just have to wait and see how he comes back from it. So now we're going to go to a little Houston Arrow talk real quick. Danny Ehrman back with the Arrows, 22 games, 10 points for him so far this year. He's the he's the highest scoring uh, prospect. The rest of these guys are just, uh, the three guys ahead of him, are just career minor leaguers to this point. Clayton Stoner with 8 points in 22 games. He's still, you know, to me, he, he's a guy I think the Wild should... Uh, give a chance at some point. Nathan Smith was on the Wild earlier this year. He's kind of been a career minor leaguer. Uh, he kind of snuck into the roster for a little while. He's got nine points in 20 games. Peter Kalis, well, good old Peter Kalis. Remember him? Guy who quit the team last year. Did man, it did come back this year. Had a very poor uh, training camp again. Started out good, but just went right back to the same habits again. And only seven points in 22 games for him. And Colton Gillies, who was on the wild all of last season, because he was ineligible for the Houston Arrows, but uh, so he's either going to be he was either going to be on the wild or on the uh, in in the juniors. And the juniors is just a waste of time, really. You know, he'd go there and get his ninety nine thousand points, but you know, the competition isn't good enough. It, it kills his development, and um, well, he's back with the team now. He's, he's on the arrows now, seven points in 22 games as well. So, uh, you know, there's it's definitely been a struggle for a lot of these guys. A lot of these prospects have struggled. Danny Ehrman finally showing a little bit more, though, this year. I mean, he's taken a small step forward. Remember last year he had like eight points in 70 games? That's, hor- that's just horrible. He's already got 10 in 22. So hopefully something can happen because he was the guy that was called up for the Wild, the first call up to the wild. So that must be, he must be the top guy right now. And their, their plan, Cody Almond, just returning from injury. He got, he has one assist in six games. And, uh, Jamie Siffers has kind of been back and forth. He hasn't really been all too productive. It's only three assists in 15 games. Uh, he hasn't really shown too much. He snuck onto the wilds roster starting out the season though, with the, the injuries all over the place. And, uh, we'll, we'll see. I guess he's the top call up over Clayton Stoner for some reason to, to date. I believe he's on the wild roster right now, believe it or not, but he's a scratch yet. And, and yes, he is. He's back on the wild again, but he's been pretty much a scratch every night. He's just an insurance policy pretty much. Um, if I'm the wild, I give Clayton Stoner a call at some point in time if they need more depth on the, on the defense because of injuries. But, uh, that's all up to them, I guess. That's how things are going to stand to this point in time. And uh, that's pretty much the guest of the show today. I hope all of you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Do call into the phone lines, 209-736-7877, 209-736-7877. Also, join the message boards on the sportstuff.com. There is a button in the upper right-hand corner of the website. Click on that. You'll click on the register button or link, which is in the left side of the website after the, you click the TSS board button. Become a member. It'd be terrific. We can talk some hockey on the sportstuff.com as we need more and more hockey fans on there, especially Minnesota hockey fans. There's nothing better in the world than that. All of you listeners out there are wanted and wanted now. Also, if you could, please rate me on iTunes. If you like the show, please rate me on iTunes. Give me a nice rating if you could. And uh, leave a nice comment if you'd like. Otherwise, just 
to do a rating if that's all you want to do, if you don't feel like writing a, small, a short little review. But uh, if you could do that, I'd appreciate that very much. Please do rate me on iTunes. It only helps, and uh, there you go. But be nice this time. No, <laughs> you get the idea. Um, thanks again for listening to the show. We will be back for the Big 3-0 in about a week, and hopefully the Wild can continue to, this strong play. It has been a very, very fun six days, six, seven days since the last show. So until then, we will talk to you later.